In this tutorial, I'm going to show you the easiest way to clean backdrops in Adobe Photoshop. So as you can see on this picture here, we've got the subject there. And you can see because of the lighting, we've picked up some of the crinkles and creases of the backdrop there. So I'm going to show you how you can smooth that out and get rid of any creases and anything else that's maybe distracting to your picture. So I'm going to go to the beginning and walk you through the process. So the first thing we want to do is actually separate the subject from the background. So the easiest way to do that is to come to any of these selection tools here. I'm going to select object selection tool and I am going to click on the little drop down menu and select cloud for a detailed results selection. That's just going to be a little bit better and then select subject and that's going to select our subject for us and you can see it's a much much better result than if we just do it on the device so come over to your layers panel and i'm going to click on the background and i'm just going to put it all the way down to the bottom here just to make a copy of it and then from there we're just going to come down to the layer mask click on that and then that means now that our subject is separated from the background so we're going to come to the background layer and we're going to press Control command j just to duplicate that background and then we want to come up to the layer mask up here, hold a control or command and click on the background copy there just to make another selection. Now when you're doing this, you need to make sure that everything is selected. So you can see that the selection there is quite close to the subject. There may be bits and bobs that haven't been selected, especially if you've got things like hair or items of clothing that are going out of that selection. So we need to expand our selection. So just come up to the top here, go to select, modify, and then expand. And let's do it by around 50 pixels and just say okay. And you can see there now our selection has gone all the way around the subject and we've got a little bit more in. So all we wanna do is we wanna fill this in. So simple enough, just come up to edit and then go to content aware fill. And there you go, there is our image it's been filled in nicely so just press OK to that and then we want to get rid of this selection so just press Control command D just to deselect that and then if you come to the background copied on the eye there if you hold the Alt or Option key down and just click what that will do is just select that one particular layer there so it's a great way if you want to just see one layer without the others it saves you having to toggle the eyes on and off all the time so then what we want to do is just clean this up so come to the patch tool Make sure the patches select to normal source. And then what we want to do is just clean up some of this background. Now, the reason why we're doing this is because we are going to be blurring the background. And if any of the areas that are dark are still visible, when we blur them, it actually expands it and it can create a bit of a halo effect. So we want to just clean this up as best we can. As you can see around here, areas like that we just want to clean it up just so there's no hard edges and it just blends a little bit better and the patch tool is perfect for that there we go so we can come down to here as well select that and just make sure that we get everything so then come back up to your layer hold the alt or option key down again just to bring back that layer there so we've got all three and what we want to do now is we want to be blurring this so come up to filter and we want to select convert for smart filters so we can go back to it again later on. It's okay to that. Go to filter and then blur and then select Gaussian blur. So when you're making these adjustments, you're better off to view the image around here so you can just see the whole of the image. So what we want to do is just increase this until all of that area just becomes blurred. So depending on your image really depends on how far you want to push this. As you can see down here, I've got some light streaks coming across there. So I want to try and keep some of them in at the same time. I want to get rid of some of that background area there. So you can see as I've gone in a little bit closer, if I hold the space bar down, I can zoom around and just have a look and see what's going on. So let's zoom out again. I think around there is good. So I'm going to say, okay to that. Obviously, we've got areas around here that we can come and tidy up. So that just use your brush tool. 
we want to make sure that we're set to white, not black. Push the opacity and flow up there. Let's just paint that back in. Obviously, you can take your time with that and get it looking absolutely spot on. So down here, there's a section here where the shoe wasn't selected as well as what it should be. And down here as well. There we go. So what we can do as well is we need to think about the, the shadows. Now we can see where the shadows of the light are. And because she's on the grey background, it's going to be a little bit more difficult than if this was just a portrait like this. For instance, if you're doing studio work and you're just shooting like this, then that would be finished. Um, but because she's actually stood it, and we've blurred, it now looks a little bit false, doesn't it? You can see she looks like she's she's almost floating there. So what we want to do is we want to bring back some of them shadows in there just to make it look a little bit more realistic. And it is worth just looking around the whole of the image, especially around the feet here. You can see that there's certain areas that I've missed and that's just due to that selection that was made earlier. So there's a couple of ways we can treat this. One would be to just increase the brush and drop the opacity and the flow down. And still saying on this mask here, we could just literally paint in the shadows. So all I'm doing is bringing back the original to give this a little bit more of a realistic look. So I'm just going over the floor here. So if I create a bigger brush, I can just paint that back in. So the reason why this usually works is because nine times out of 10, the background is what the issue is here. And it's not necessarily due to if you have a crinkly background, because sometimes you might like something with a, with a the actual background is dead smooth, but you still get that effect. And that's just due to the light in it because the light is too low. So you need to raise the light up in order to get a softer look. So when it comes to the floor, you can usually get away with it because it is not creased and the light is usually flatter on there. One last thing that you can address is this banding effect. You can see here we've got banding and that's just because we've blurred the background there. So the easiest way to do that is to just zoom out, come up to the top here, go to image mode and change it from eight bits per channel to 16 bits per channel. Say okay, and that is it. That will get rid of all that banding on the background there. So that's how you do it. It's as simple as that. I hope you enjoyed that. Take care and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.